Good afternoon. I'm going to be very brief. I'm not going to preach to you or give a sermon or holler at you or yell at you. I'm just going to tell you a very quick story and read two scriptures and be out of your life. But this is very important. And please hear me out. My name is Minister Paul Maxey. I live near Sacramento, California, and I grew up in the Bay Area. I'm just going to tell a really quick story, like two minutes or less. I didn't get to graduate from eighth grade. I never got a high school, you know, graduation, and prom and all that. That's the kind of life I raised, I was raised up in. Um, you don't have, I, what I want to do is I want to tell you about Jesus Christ. But before you leave, please hear me out. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a member of a perfect crew or group or anybody. This is, you don't have to be anything special at all. Let me tell you how I was quickly, how I met Jesus, because I've set a goal to help win 2,000 souls to Jesus Christ. And, and, you know, we're running out of time. In, uh, in Fairfield, California, Google it, Google Earth it. I've never hidden anything about my life on the internet, uh, and I'm certainly not going to start now in 2012. In seventh grade, I got kicked out of those two intermediate schools. I got kicked out of both of them for extreme acts of violence. At seventh grade, you can bear witness to friends of mine on Facebook. I don't really do Facebook anymore, but a lot of them are on here watching. Um, I went to Sullivan Elementary. Ever, ever heard of that? Got, I got kicked out of there, so they sent me uh, all the way across town to Grange. It's called Grange Intermediate. I got in a couple fights. I just had like an anger problem because I wasn't being raised properly, and I was just taking it out on the world. It seemed like I was mad at the world, and I was rolling with the wrong people. I was in a clique. I was on my way to prison. I did six months for that. When everybody else was graduating eighth grade to go to their freshman year, I was in juvenile hall in Fairfield, California for six months at the age of like 15, I think. Um, I was the ping pong champion. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that would dispute that. Uh, number one person being my sister. Um, because she was also in, in juvenile hall for six months for growing up similar to me. She stole a car. She, you know, but I'm going to tell you a, a joke about that, but her life went in one direction and my life went in another direction. I joined the military and uh, she went into uh, another direction. So I basically escaped. Um, so, it, you know, while I was in that pool hall, one thing I never was was a liar, to be honest with you. So what you're hearing is the truth. And if you stay on this channel, what you always hear is the truth. Even at my worst of my worst, drinking, smoking cigarettes. We drink a, a pint of 151 on Friday nights, just three of us. 151 with a lot of McDonald's Diet Coke. That was the, that was the deal. And, and do things we don't even remember. We're talking seventh grade. Um... Smoke so many cigarettes, you'd be throwing up the next day. Anybody ever been there like that? Um, one day when I was in juvenile hall, I was just sitting in my cell. We had solo cells, and I was going through it. It was called the new uh, the new start program or something. It was basically a program you had to graduate certain levels, and and, uh, and I wanted to get out of there as quick as possible. New Discovery, I think it was called New Discovery. Google it, Fairfield, California uh, Juvenile Facility. They got a program there still, I check. So I was like on my fifth one, and sixth, the sixth one was visits. I didn't get no visits. So it's like, you know, it's like hard time in there with people, bad people. Um, I felt something in my heart. I was crying. I was lost. I didn't know what. You know, this is real. I, I didn't know. I didn't have any answers for life, and I felt like my life was going nowhere. And this warmth came over me, and I felt a presence. 
And I realized that presence was Jesus Christ. And to that, to the day, to that day, that I was 15, I'm 48 now. I'll be 49 in March. That presence has never left me. Not once. My friends have left me. I lost my brother. I lost my mother. I got, God gave me a good wife. She lost her mother and her brother. And I believe God knew that I would never have been able to handle the death of my brother, my fishing partner, without Jesus in my heart. So I simply said, someone had told me about Jesus. I was raised in the church. And I said, Jesus, will you help me? It's all, and, and you know, so real quickly, and we're going to read a couple of scriptures. I'm believing that whoever's watching this, God, I, I just came off of my knees praying for a half hour, just for you. If you're watching this, it's for you. I, I'm bearing my whole life out here for you. I never got in trouble again after I, I, I made Jesus Christ my, my Savior. He, he lives inside you. He's a, like a, he's a real person. In the spirit form, he lives inside you. He's blocked bullets from me. I, listen, I don't care if you're, what I'm trying to get at is, I'm a minister now. Never got in trouble again. Most people of my friends that I grew up with are dead. Another one right now is dying and still won't believe me that Jesus is real. And he's got kidney disease and cancer and, and he lost his brother to diabetes. Same age as me. One of the boys that we, we hung with. Jeff. I hope he's watching Jeff. It's real. Um, if you need more evidence, because I'm going to do a little, read you a couple of scriptures. What God did was he gave me this gift. He said, if you follow me, I'll give you this gift. And I have this gift. It's you know things. You know things in the future. So if you go, if you're familiar with how YouTube works, and you go look at my prophecy and dream and vision section, the three separate sections, easy to find, right off my main page. God started showing me things that were going to happen in the end days. Last year, they started ramping up, but I got it at age 15. I would just know stuff. If you have trouble believing that Jesus is real, then don't believe me for what I'm saying. Believe me for what God says on my channel. Out of the prophecies that I said would occur, sadly, after today, with this mass shooting at this school, the guy killed his brother and his mom and, like, 20 children. If you can't look around and see everything just turn into evil. I said, when I was on Google Earth and I was over the Capitol, and I said, because of our federal government and state government and city government uh, changing the school system and not watching over our kids, a mass shooting was coming. I've been saying that, I think, since July. God showed me. Go check all of those things I said and prove God. God said, try me. He says that in the Bible. He says, try me. So I did try him. After this tragic incident today, as I sit before you as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we went from 75%, hear me please, don't leave yet, 80% of the things that God showed me has come true. I don't know, hear me, this is where you come in. Only 20% remains. And that 20% is really, really bad. It involves a World War III where they surround Israel. It's all in the Holy Bible. The odds of what I just told you happening would be like me hitting Powerball three times. Think about it. 80%. I didn't report them afterwards. God showed me before. The 20% the that's left is a World War just among, in general, an attack on Israel and Revelation 13, an Antichrist rising up to make you bow to him and submit to him. So you can accept Jesus now on December 14th, 80% in one year. That's how fast things are going. That's why 
it seems like the whole year just flew by because it really did fly by. And next year will fly by quicker. And for all we know, it's our last year. Before those that have been chosen to accept Jesus get taken out of here. Because some of the things that happen of that 20% that's left, that God showed me, that's on here, recorded forever. Well, I'm not here for it. And I, I don't want you to be here for it either, because what's coming upon this world, so, so, would you, if you feel like you need to be perfect, if you're looking at a man who had to go back and get his GED just to be able to join the Navy, had to get a waiver for the violence and have it reduced from a, from two assault with the deadly weapons to an aggravated assault and battery. You couldn't get in nowadays. I know people have tried with, with what I did back then. It couldn't have got in now. It's too competitive. There's no jobs. Different world back then. So, will you be one of the 2,000 people that God has called me to speak to? Because after I read these scriptures, you're just going to go straight to Jesus like I did. And your life is going to work it all out. And everything that's coming upon this world, the rest of the 20% of this, you'll be protected from you and your family. So let me read this scripture. I'm just going to plant a little seed in your life. Thank you for hearing me out. Short. I'm almost done. I'll be done in two minutes. Yeah. John 3.16, I'll put, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put links, just click and read just exactly what I read. John 3.16, it says, for God, the one that created everything, you know God, everybody knows God, they say they don't believe him, but really, how can you not believe in God? All you got to do is look around. For God so loved the world, and that includes you. I don't care what you've been told. I, I didn't feel like anybody loved me, but you know what? That's why I was had so many problems as a youth. But God did. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Would you give your only son away to be killed? That's how much God loves you. That whosoever believeth in him, in God, and, and his son Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his son not into the world to condemn the world. In other words, God didn't send Jesus down here to point his finger at you and say, look, bad guy. But that the world through him, Jesus, might be saved. That's John 16, 17. We'll put a link. See, now you can be a part of that redemption plan like I did. And you know what? People say it's born and I'm having the time of my life. Romans 10, verse 9. This is how you meet Jesus. We can start the part. You want to start right now. That it says, this is honest truth in here. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You. For with the heart, man or woman, believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm going to put a link to both of those scriptures. Now, I'm not going to pray at you and preach at you and yell at you. I'm just going to say I've never lied to, and I'm not lying to you. And my channel will bear witness that I speak the truth. Will you be one of those 2,000? My job is reaching out to people. It's not easy, but I do it. You can just say right now, and you can believe in your heart and say, you know what, I believe this man. Why would he lie? Why would he sit here and lie? He gave me his real name. I live at 1111. The city that he lives, where he went to school, that he was a thug. And now he's a licensed and ordained minister. What, what, what purpose could he possibly have for lying? And it's true. He did say all these things in April, May, and June. Because God spoke them, not me. 
You get that? So now God's speaking to your heart and he's saying, listen, that what you're feeling right now, that's Jesus. He's real. If you will believe that in your heart and you will just say, you know what? I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and the only way to heaven. Say that. Jesus Christ is Lord and he's real. Would you come down and, and spend some time with me, Jesus? Would you come down and spend some time with me, Jesus? Keep, keep saying that. And I'm going to click stop. And I'm going to upload. And I'll be praying for you. And I promise if you say that, you will have eternal life up in heaven in a mansion. And all the rest of the 20% of the stuff that God's shown me in here, you will be able to avoid. And if you've ever lost any loved ones like me, you get to spend eternity with them. It's up to you. Will you, will you say that? You have a blessed weekend, okay? Because I, I know in my heart I feel something. Somebody is hearing from God right now.